In December of 2019, the world was introduced to a novel coronavirus, which we would all soon call COVID-19. And while society came to a standstill in the wake of this public health crisis, behind the scenes, biotech researchers were hard at work to develop and deliver a vaccine in just under a year. At the time, the rapid pace of development may have seemed impossible, but the successful outcome was thanks to innovation in mRNA or messenger RNA technology that had actually been going on at biotech companies like Moderna for more than a decade. In my work as an equity analyst covering biotechnology, I've watched Moderna and its CEO, Stefan Bonsell, become a household name with its work on mRNA. As the world enters its third year battling the virus, I traveled to Boston to speak with Stefan and find out what it was like during the most trying periods of development, his views on the new variants such as Omicron, and the possibilities ahead for mRNA technology. Thanks for doing this with us. So given everything that's happened with Omicron, I thought it would be a great place to start just talking about what the outlook is for the virus and what we can expect to see. So we believe, as we have seen for now more than a year, that the virus is not going away. Humans are going to live with SARS-CoV-2, like we are living with a lot of other viruses. And we're going to move over time from a pandemic phase where you have a lot of people dying, a lot of people hospitalized, and those waves coming. And those waves should, in in terms of mortality, in terms of number of people dying, be lower and lower, to then evolve to an endemic setting similar to what we know with flu and RSV and other viruses, including some coronaviruses like OC43, viruses that circulate in the community that depending on your age, your vaccination status, your previous infection, you get regularly sick again. And so we think we're in a world where we're gonna get boosted regularly for, for SARS-CoV-2. I cannot tell you the frequency, I think it will depend on your age. And I cannot tell you when we're going to move from pandemic to endemic uh, because I did not think that we'll have such a new virus like Omicron with so many mutations happening so fast. The next few weeks are going to be very important for us to learn a lot about it in terms of virulence, transmissibility, um, antibody levels with vaccines. How does that translate or not in vaccine efficacy? There's a lot of unknown right now. But I don't know what happened in three months or six months. If there's a new one, if there's you know, a pie, uh, or a variant or something else. So while we are waiting to learn more about the virus, its impact on antibody levels, we're already working, as you know, on several strategies as second and third line of defense, just to be ready. Moderna has accomplished a tremendous amount over the last two years. I thought maybe you could touch on your personal thoughts and feelings around that accomplishment in the COVID vaccine. As you can imagine, this has been uh, a crazy ride for the entire planet and of course for people at the company. For people who didn't know us like you did, you know, two years ago, you know, 800 people, never done a phase three, never got a product of our eyes, never made more than 100,000 doses in a year. It's super humbling, uh, at least for me, to see the commitment of a team, the desire to do whatever it takes, to save every day, to save every hour, the level of collaboration across, you know, industry, with you know, the FDA, with you know, Dr. Fauci and his team and uh, so many others around the world. You mentioned something that a lot of people don't know about the company, which is no proof product, small on the scale of major pharma companies, right? A few hundred employees. How did you set up the company for success to be able to transform, you know, have such a transformative event here? Yeah, so I think a few things at first, we had always built the company for scale. Since we started the company you know, a little bit over 10 years ago, because of the science and because mRNA is an information molecule, we always said it was ever going to be no drug. And we literally, it was a very obvious thing to us that we could go bankrupt because running out of money before we have a drug uh, approved, or it would be a company with a lot of drugs. And of course, as entrepreneurs, we didn't build a company assuming we're going to fail. So some of the things that's really helped us during this this crisis with COVID is our, our plant in Massachusetts. The plant had been built for scale, <laughs> not that scale, obviously, <laughs> but had been built for scale, massively digitalized, a lot of robotics, so that when that challenge emerged, the team was ready to run. And the team was a team with experience. 
that's another piece where we were prepared and lucky. Uh, you know, Juan Andres, who ran manufacturing, was the head of manufacturing for Novartis worldwide. So all those things, when the crisis hit, you know, in January of 2020, allowed us to be running very, very quickly. A lot of people have now heard about mRNA or, or, or you know, or messenger RNA, but I still think, you know, a lot of people aren't really sure what it is and also why you can build a platform off of it and how you can build a, you know, multi-product company off of it. mRNA is an information molecule. It's a molecule that we all have thousands of copies in each one of our cells. It's the molecule that carries genetic information across life, from plants to fishes to, you know, little dogs to humans. Because it's code and like software that is made of zeros and ones, this code is made, as you know, of four letters. And so if you were able to develop one vaccine, like we've been working in our first vaccine in the clinic was a, a flu pandemic vaccine, this allowed us to just change the genetic code from flu to SARS-CoV-2 and just go and fly. You know, it has been massively reported that, you know, it took us you know, 48 hours to develop the vaccine or to design the vaccine, sorry, on the computer. The truth is it took the team 10 minutes. It took them two days to click order so that that information went to a factory to make the physical vaccine uh, that a lot of people do not realize that there was nine vaccine in human testing before that. Is exactly the same molecule that has been given to hundreds of millions of people around the planet. And that is remarkable in terms of when you think about how drugs are, or vaccines are developed in the old pharmaceutical ways. Uh, this is kind of science fiction. And that's, I think, really the disruption that mRNA has provided is, is because the, inform the molecule is information-based, you can build the whole enterprise, especially in today's age. We could not have done that 30 years ago. You talked about the hires that you made early on to scale the company. Just how do you think about people in the company? It took us a while in the first few years to figure out what was the right culture for this technology. Because I would propose that if we had been or a combined company or a cell culture company or, you know, a small molecule company, we might have had a very different culture. Mm -hmm. And so what we realized is that because it was really kind of cutting edge science, we were inventing in our labs things that nobody else in the world knew or had ever published in academia uh, or in other companies, that, you know, curiosity was a, a, a key element that had to be there in our culture. Uh, being bold and not being scared of things. You know, being relentless is another value that we cherish tremendously because a lot of things don't work well the first time when you do things that nobody has done before you on the planet. <laughs> Can we talk about AI and digital? Because I know it's one of the things that you stress. How did you set up the company for that? And how would you compare that to a traditional pharma company that people know about, like a Merck or a Lilly or a Pfizer? If you look at the process across many, many different departments or function in the company, in most companies, it's... Uh, total mix of a digital part of a process, then it's analog, it's on paper, then it's digital again, then it's analog, 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 digital, digital. But you have the incredible loss of velocity, accuracy, quality, um, by having those changes from analog to digital world. And so I came to Moderna with first the insight that mRNA is an information molecule. And so if you think about it, our product, it's just a piece of, it, of software. We just need to have it all digital from get-go. And we need to make sure that those same processes that exist in a, a little Moderna or a big Lilly or a big Pfizer, that they are done digitally all across so that once you capture information digitally, you cannot transform it back to analog. It's crazy. Um, and, and, and so we invested a lot in IT at the beginning. We invested a lot to have fully integrated systems. And so it became this obsession to say, a drug is basically, in, without technology, designed in somebody's head, which is what protein do I want, and then you code it on the software with a mouse, and then you click order and just says digital. So that's really become a fundamental, fundamental part of, of how we build Moderna. One of the other things that, that's probably come up a lot in the last two years is the organization has clearly been under a lot of stress. Yes. How have you dealt with that? Uh, the, the human sacrifice that people have had to give uh, is just incredible. I don't believe there is any marriage in a company, the employees that has not been shaken. Um, you know, I've not been a great dad the last two years because I miss so many dinners and breakfast. And I think I went to one soccer game of my daughter in two years. I went to the last one because my wife, thankfully, she's a saint. 
she made me realize that you realize tomorrow is your daughter's last soccer game in high school ever. And, and I know it has happened to all of our employees. Uh, but the thing that, again, is remarkable for me is how people knew that this was the calling, this was their duty, this was their way to contribute to this you know, awful pandemic. But you think about COVID, all of us were locked down in the spring of 2020. You know, kids were out of school. All of us know somebody who died of COVID because it has been such a traumatic event that I think gave so much energy to everybody to say, we just have to get this done. I think one of the other things, you know, as, as, as you're going through that time and the organization's under a lot of stress, you also have to make a lot of tough decisions. You made a decision to slow down enrollment in the phase three trial. Um, despite being first in the clinic, that made you second to have results compared to Pfizer. Um, and you did that to make sure you had a broad, diverse set of people in the study so that you knew how the vaccine worked across um, all kinds of people. You know, I'm not doing this job because I want a promotion. I'm not doing this job because I want to make more money. Uh, I'm doing this job because I really genuinely think that we can help a lot of people. And when we looked at it with a team, we like, look, if we don't have enough diversity in the, in the phase three, we knew g getting into the study that some uh, minorities in the country have very bad history with vaccines. If there's many, many communities that do not want to take the vaccine because they don't trust the vaccine efficacy and its safety, we will have failed. It would have been great to have a flag, we are the first vaccine approved and so on, but we will have morally failed. So I'm like, look, if it means we're going to be, you know, a week after Pfizer, like, so be it. What we care about is this kind of long-term impact versus kind of the short-term, you know, uh, a milestone of a short-term, you know, we world. What is the next product for Moderna? What are you working on and what are you most excited about? The piece I'm very excited about is I think we're going to move from a COVID prime vaccination to already today in most countries a COVID booster with uh, the whole strain to um, most probably a new COVID booster, <laughs> most probably for the fall of 22. And then to have flu in that same product, same vial, and then to have RSV. So what really excites me now is there are pre-COVID times around 5 million people at least who die every year of respiratory viral infection. You know, if we could have on the planet a single booster shot that you get at your local pharmacy or GP at the end of the summer or early fall that prevents you from getting disease or hospitalization or deaths from any of those 10-ish respiratory virus, I think that would be an incredible uh, technology and medical impact that we'll have on, on, on life. The second piece I'm really excited about is, as you know, Matt, there are a lot of latent viruses, viruses that once we humans are infected, st stuck in our body forever. But a lot of those viruses have, have a lot of long-term effect on quality of life, cancer, uh, even uh, life expectancy and other things. And I believe this is another uh, world in which Moderna in the next 10, 20, 30 years, when I think about all of them, and the time is going to get to get the planet vaccinated. Then there's tropical vaccines that we don't talk about a lot in this part of the world. But, you know, in, 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 in a lot of emerging countries, people die today of yellow fever, or of rabies, or of Zika. When you have a platform company, making one more product is not so hard. And so we're very committed, you know, we have Zika vaccine in phase two, and the team SEM is developing a, a large portfolio of tropical vaccine, we've announced we want to build a plant in Africa. And so that's another way I think we're going to have a big impact. And, and, and I've not yet talked about therapeutics. And so we're in cancer, we're in autoimmune disease, in cardiology, in genetic disease. We want to keep expanding the platform because at the end of the day, mRNA and proteins are the foundation of how, how we are, how we're made, how we live, how we work as a species. And I think the impact is going to be very profound. What is it going to be precisely 10 years from now? I don't know. I just think it's going to be really big. This has been tons of fun. Thanks for Thanks for doing this with us and we wish you and the company all the best. Thank you so much.